There they both are. Two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet, like two baby crocodiles. Good, they're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. He's very animated all of a sudden. This seems like a touchy subject. No problem. She's very well composed. Back straight. He tries his best to look nonchalant, but there's a rigidity in him, as if trying to conceal something warm and deep beneath a cool exterior. A flinch jolts his frame. The question has touched a nerve. Real police would never uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? Yes, you absolutely should. It's awful that you lost it. Yes, it's not a good idea. It's a fucking hilarious idea! You two puskapas get on top of each other and fuck! In silence, the lieutenant gives you a meaningful glance. As if to say, case in point. He is comfortable reciting these thoughts. He's spent quite a lot of time meditating on the subject. There's something odd in the way he carries himself. His set of clothing looks vaguely mismatched. The different pieces of the attire seem ill-fitting. His shirt is far too small and an unpleasantly tight fit, while the overalls held up by a belt seem to fit a man with much more corpulence. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform. Then, before you is a walrus of a man seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. With a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. Please, have a seat. The folding chair looks like a torture device, extremely uncomfortable. Who does this guy think you are? Ronnie the Rookie? You ain't worried about no lost gun, or unpaid bill, or forgotten name. You're the bad cop. You're probably more corrupt than him. Good. Now lean in with some corruption. That's it. Now kick back and add a final flourish for dignity. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. He usually looks you straight in the eye. A little something just crumbled there. What? His posture changes. The swaying rooster motion stops for a second. Then he gets it going again, reorienting himself. Yet, were he to quit, he would lose the cool factor. This man relishes his cool quite a bit, Malone told me. You're very cool. Bang, 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 bang! You feel a twitch in your index fingers. There's a finger shootout of brewing. It's going to be very difficult for anyone to take you seriously with these things on your face. No. You are definitely not buying those. Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand, buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek, a windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind. Summer, 100% waterproof. And sport, all in different typefaces. Be careful. This man still got some fight in him, by the looks of it. It won't be easy to break him. 
Perhaps it was another Harife who came and woke me up, looking at my boots, asking questions. Or uh, perhaps it was one of the others in this carnival. I don't remember. As she says, carnival, she gestures to the empty square with the statue and the machines. That's right, dear. How splendid. Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there, but now she relaxes her shoulders. Just a moment. She's agitated, judging from the way she keeps pulling at the frayed edge of her blanket. That's uh, one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. She's used to playing off such insults casually, but they still affect her. Enthusiasm has wiped the worry from her face. Her eyes sparkle behind her glasses. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. So cool. From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights and they solve shit. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop, Dick Mullen. Salam Rocky Bayi, badass on the edge disco cop. Time to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera. Lights. With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you, and you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. It's his cool jacket. God knows it's too cold to run around in this, but he refuses to change. Who cares about the cold when you have your cool jacket to wear? You can completely sympathize. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Breathe. He's wearing mud-caked boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. The leather jacket suits him well. It must be custom made. Is this about Victor, my husband? Is he in some kind of trouble again? I can come pick him up in the station if that's what. Keep it together. You don't want your body language to tell her the news. She's so tense, it's a miracle she hasn't snapped in half yet. It's not about the haircut, it's about the confidence. She's squeezing on the pendant too tight, a drop of blood in her palm. There, there. The year is 51 and spring has only just started. I'm sure there are better days ahead. She looks flustered, her hands smoothing out the creases in her blanket, even as she attempts to reassure you. Despite the early spring chill, the boy is wearing short track pants that leave his legs exposed below the knee. They look dynamic. It keeps me entertained. He's well composed, but underneath it you sense psychedelic processes bubbling. Some kind of drug, maybe. Very normal behavior. You must have been in great shape. Something tells you you're never going to talk to an individual this cool or mysterious ever again. He's barely holding it together. It's all he can do to keep from bursting out in laughter. Come on, detective, let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? 
His hands are clean and well manicured. This is a man who knows the importance of appearances. Hmm? Me? I, uh... You've managed to catch the lieutenant off guard, but only for a moment. He quickly recomposes himself. I'm a lieutenant of the RCM, dedicated to maintaining law and order in Ravashon. Hmm? What about me, gendarme? Could he be a member of the homosexual underground? He and his men carry themselves like giants. You'll need to prove your mettle to be taken seriously. Detective. Starting from the right. Boot size, 44. Blonde man, in his 30s. Overbearingly masculine. Wants the world to know he's a macho, macho man. Tobacco chewing and knuckle cracking. Who else do we have here? Blaine, who looks like he might be Titus's right-hand man. The least antsy of the bunch. Definitely not his first time being questioned by the police. Fuck off, Shanky. Angus is a powerful guy. All muscle. Keep your eye on this powerful guy. Sooner or later, he's going to break like a piece of twig. This one is a stone wall. You won't get more out of them about the night of the murder. Not yet. Well, let's hear it then. Who is your mystery fella? He's not alarmed by the sudden appearance of a witness, but he is surprised. Oh, it's her! It's definitely her! It's Miss Oranje, disco dancer! You inexplicably add cool after the victim's name, but no one notices. Your spine is too damn straight. None of these people would ever suspect you've met her. Well enough, copper. We party. She's been here for a few months. He tries to make it sound real casual, but the muscles on his neck tighten. My mug? Why would you think that? His eyes widen at the sight of the mug. He's seen it before, all right. There's something going on here. You should observe it more closely after this topic is concluded. I told you everything I know, sir. I'm truly sorry for the muck, but I have nothing to do with that. He's not feeling too comfortable in his own skin. Odd, I'd say. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. As he lowers his tone, he hunches his back. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. No, he's scrawny. Try again. Yes, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles, stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... I was ashamed of what I did. And I didn't want you to know. The girl keeps her hands folded, hidden. Why is that? It was okay, sir. There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. You know, like a cat in the dark. All big and wide-eyed. <laughs> it certainly looks odd on a man. The swiveling eyes of a loony drug addict. That is what she meant. You were probably going into. Her face looks powdery and painted from all the makeup. Yes, I'm afraid so. A real treat she is. It would be nice if she had... No, we couldn't have afforded more children, really. Not in this economy. A glimmer of sadness blinks through the well-crafted exterior. The lieutenant returns your baleful look with a satisfied grin. Come on, is that your game face? You're practically broadcasting your position to the lieutenant with that expression. 
Oh. That's so helpful of him. The lieutenant looks at you, and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. He's able to contain the anger and surprise. She bats away your questions like flies. She's not intimidated by mere police officers. The sharp drop in endorphins is almost visible, like a warm blanket has fallen off her shoulders. The wave of chill, the quivering jaw, indications of a drug high. And sadder yet, because the dope heads and burnouts hold up in her with the worst kind. He leans back a little, watching you with a steady, serious gaze, letting you imagine just how bad those dope heads and burnouts really are. You feel like you can go for a little disco when, or if, they get this club going. You've got it in you. Wordless, he takes the photo and looks at it. Grey eyes dart back and forth on the glossy surface. His face is unmoving. Hard as a stone, but beneath it. Nothing's going on with you. Everything is perfectly fine. We're just here to look at the pleasure wheel. A security contractor? Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire? He performs a motion as if spraying bullets from a machine gun. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements ungainly. He looks like your understanding of a scientist. Me? I'm not a people person, unless you haven't noticed. And I don't make a good lecturer. My strength lies in field work and persistence. This is a gruff man who's been ridiculed too many times to feel comfortable talking about what's dearest to his heart. It's in his shoulders. His face is everything. No, no. No need to apologize, Geary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. He keeps the language unemotional, but it's in there. Disappointment. I just think Kuno doesn't know shit. The fuck out of here! Kuno's tired of this shit! As you leave, you notice his usual rooster-like swaying posture has changed. Slowed down. Like clockwork unwinding. <coughs> he has a 38 degree fever. His resilience has given way. Put it right here, Mulko! Right here! The sound of the explosion from your gun echoes all over Martinez. The bullet found its way to the heart of a kid. Yes, officer. As you see, it's in perfect working order. His manner is casual, but his speech is careful, measured. He wants you to know that he has nothing to hide. His posture changes. The swaying rooster motion stops for a second. Then he gets it going again, reorienting himself. Despite the early spring chill, the boy is wearing short track pants that leave his legs exposed below the knee. They look dynamic. You to his partner and back. The medals on his chest rattle and glare. He keeps his spine straight and his ribcage lifted, displaying them proudly. Two, the larger one is shaped like a cross, while the smaller medal resembles the sun. A crowned head in front of two crossed rifles the medal hangs from a blue striped triangle. A small blue star inside an orange sun. It has the word Valiance written below. He was the commanding officer and I was on duty, just doing my job. Shouldn't hand out medals for that. Thirteen months later, I received the sun for distinguished service. It's not worth mentioning. 
You sense he's downplaying it. He did a lot more than his duty. More than anyone's duty. It's in his spine, in his billowing breasts, and untarnished self-worth. And that heaven wise crawling with mangled half dead prince on his back. He still managed to murder three rebels on his way. Is that pride in his voice? It's deep down, but maybe even unbeknownst to the man himself. It's there. Was there something else you wanted to take from us? Just like that, he analyzed the situation, accepted the facts and moved on, like a soldier. Up there, I give it all I got. I earn my keep. But you're right, officer. There is no middle ground. It's do or die. Something about him has changed. He's calmer somehow. Damn Frisell. He was the king we couldn't protect. The Carabineers failed him. And the crown. He died in the hands of the Hyperlay. In a very public execution. He slouches as he says that. It makes him smaller, admitting they left the king to the mob. As René turns from you to his partner and back. The medals on his chest rattle and glare. He keeps his spine straight and his ribcage lifted, displaying them proudly. Two, the larger one is shaped like a cross, while the smaller medal resembles the sun. A crowned head in front of two crossed rifles. The medal hangs from a blue striped triangle. A small blue star inside an orange sun. It has the word Valiance written below. He was the commanding officer and I was on duty, just doing my job. Shouldn't hand out medals for that. Thirteen months later, I received the sun for distinguished service. It's not worth mentioning. You sense he's downplaying it. He did a lot more than his duty. More than anyone's duty. It's in his spine, in his billowing breasts and untarnished self-worth. And that heaven wise crawling with mangled half dead prince on his back, he still managed to murder three rebels on his way. Is that pride in his voice? It's deep down, but maybe even unbeknownst to the man himself, it's there. Was there something else you wanted to take from us? Just like that, he analyzed the situation accepted the facts and moved on, like a soldier. 